Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PIN. We're here at the MWF Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. I am joined at this time with by some Hollywood. old guys. What is it? With some old guys. With some old guys. <laughs> <laughs> the geriatric tri uh, trio now. With uh, Hollywood Bob Starr or Playboy Bob Starr. Depends on what area you're from. I know who he really is. And the insatiable or the erotic Adrian Hall. I've also Thank had you. the experience both ends of that. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight minute. we're coming to you from the MW, uh, MWF uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. And I just wanted to take a second or two just to bring you, our pin folks, a little bit more information. Earlier this year, we aired an episode about the Health and Exercise Palace on North Avenue. And a lot of the guys that attended that area are no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah. A few are. So I wanted to get a minute or two's worth of your thoughts about that period in your career, the development of your career, as we move forward and we can present to the fans to paint that whole picture. That's what PIN's about, painting that whole picture of the independent scene for us. When we come in, when we broke it, we caught it on fire and what we did. So, Ed, you want to talk, or Adrian, you want to talk a little bit? Yeah, for me it was very short-lived. Okay. Um, I went down to the uh, the gym on North Avenue, um, Axel and AJ Fritzoy. I knew that they attended there, and they asked me to come down, and I kind of went in the ring, and, I, you know, I, they basically beat the hell out of me on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of jobbing for them there. But it was invaluable experience. You know, it's really where I made my connections. It's where I met Jimmy Leon. It's right. where, you know, I really developed a much stronger relationship with Axel and AJ, which kind of, especially when you consider Axel, that really carried me through my entire career. You know, he was the first person that got me on my first show down in Georgia. He was the first person that was booking me in Maryland, you know, so the work that I did with him in the ring really kind of set the, the solid foundation of, of of my wrestling in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And then when that kind of panned out, that's when we kind of moved on to the Monster Factory. But, you know, it was always exciting going down there because you just never knew if a bullet was going to go flying by your head or... <laughs> Somebody was going to get stabbed around a the corner. A shoot for the shoot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it was a frightening place to go. And it just always shocked me because AJ lived down there. He didn't think anything of it. A bullet would go off. He'd be like, huh. You know, just didn't even bother him. Now, if memory serves me, I come from our Dundalk crew, me and you, Bob, or you and I, Bob. You were in the Parkville crew. I absolutely yep. was. Prior Wait. to that, we used to get together for our. That was our when era. backyard wrestling That's was how it cool. Started. Exactly, <laughs> and then you wound up down in in uh, North Avenue, and then eventually migrated to Barry Hardy's. Yep. Uh, where we really hooked up and man, it really picked up from there. Exactly, and, and Dave the Wave was instrumental in all of this, you right. know, because Dave was the one that pulled that Dundalk crew and that Parkville crew together. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the one that made the initial contacts with people like Axel and and really started building that larger base. Because you know, the, I didn't know anybody. Right. You know, it was something that he really kind of kicked off, and that was really pretty important. And it's funny to see all those people from Parkville and those people from Dundalk and how far they went in building up the independent scene in Maryland. Absolutely. Bob, with you, your introduction down there. I started just before Adrian did. When I when I started, it was with Jim Leon and Joey Mags, and Axel was there as well. And, it, and, it, and it's funny because someone just gave us these pictures. I want to hold up a picture for the people out there that are watching, and I know it's here. Where is it? There it is. Joey Mags. Hot shot Joey Mags. It's There's, probably a 1985 or 1986 promo shot. Yep, from, shot from in Jim there. Leon's house. With a bed sheet on the wall, which is how most of our promos were done back then. Oh, God. That was his um, bed sheets? Yeah, it was. A, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to check it for DNA. I'll put it to you like that. <laughs> I started, when I started down there, I had met a girl by the name, I'll just use her first name, Lisa, um, as a fan. You know, we all went to the Civic Center twice a month. You right. Know, NWA and WWF. And I met her there, and I met a few of her friends, and she was dating one of the guys, or, or had went out on a few dates with Jim Leon. Mm -hmm. And she was inter instrumental in putting me together with him. Uh, the first night I went down there, if you can imagine, you walk up this long flight of steps, and you hook a right, and this little office thing or whatever, where you're supposed to sign in or pay whatever to go in the gym, and the funk that came from this place. <laughs> because it was a workout gym. Right. Okay. Which we, didn't, we didn't stay in the weights too much up front, but in the back they had boxers. And they had professional and amateur, whatever. And then they started the wrestling gig on the nights that the boxers weren't there. 
So basically, we were destroying their boxing ring because it wasn't a wrestling ring. Oh. It had a straight stick in the middle, and let me tell you, my back—the only broken bones I ever had in this business were from that ring. Come from that ring. But it, you know, it—it's—it's it's kind of like Adrian said. The kids in nowadays, they don't understand that you know they come into the business and because they're friends with somebody, or because they have a special look, maybe they maybe they are a little chiseled or whatever. It's that push right off the bat. They don't understand what it's like to get your ass beat every day right and be happy about that you had that spot in the beginning and then you earned your way earn that's you a know? big word bob that's a word that's missing today you know, earn in today in today's wrestling unfortunately a lot of times if you can sell tickets you can be a champion of course right. you can't tie my boots but you can still be a champion exactly. but north avenue was an amazing place because look at the guys that came from there. Right. Now, I know your audience is all over the country. This show is really popping, bro. It's really cool. But a lot of these people have no clue who some of us are. Now, I got some national TV. Right. You know, Axel had national TV. Um, the people that came out of that gym, they all pretty much, they hung around for the long the long shot. Oh, yeah. You know? Like these young kids now, they'll work for a couple of years and they just disappear. You know? And nobody even asks about them. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a show, if you go up and ask somebody about Bob Starr, there's a good chance they're going to know who it know. is. Ricky Blues or Adrian Hall. Because we paid the dues. That, that That's a thing that's a thing of the past almost now, was paying dues. Right. You know, not just monetarily, but with your body. Yeah, exactly. And you, you gain respect from people by doing that. And, you know, North Avenue is just, you know, I don't know what they ever did with the building. I'm sure it's still there. It's an it's, old Sears or yeah, something. It, it or the was. Sears was across the street is what it was. And, but, you know, and like Adrian said, boy, that was a, it was a scary place some nights. <laughs> um, but I, it, there's nothing I would ever change about it because it was like, you know, Rip, I think, Sawyer, that somebody ran shows in that building. Right. And they had that, shows that were that was packed. Rip. Yeah, that was and Rip. they were packed. Right. And that, that was just before I got in. But it, you know, North Avenue, is it's something I hold special, you know. It, it's like... I went to Barry Hardy's place, and I went to Bounty Hunter's place. I went to all the different schools at one time or another, whether it was just to work out for a night or two, or like at Barry's, we, we worked all the time. Right. But North Avenue was a place where stars were born, you know? And it's like, the for a fan, anybody that wants to get in this business, if you get into the business, you come in in a certain class with different kids that join at the right. same time. Let me know in 10 or 15 years if you're all still We're in the business. Just, exactly. we, we still are. Exactly. We're still trying to get this guy back in his tights. Trying to. And I know we can get you in your tights because I was your tag team partner like two years time. ago. Exactly. So, you know, it, but it, it's it, North Avenue is just, it, it's history in Maryland wrestling. For, well, and for that's, what, that's what we got to do with this show. Breathe life back into that history because it is a foundry stone for where we came from. One more thing about North Avenue, which I think is, is really critical, is that, you know, and Bob made me think of this. When we went to North Avenue, we were working out in the ring, and yes, we were working on our technical skills. We were working on our bumps, our falls, you know, working the ring ropes. But the other thing that was really important was understanding the crowd mentality, understanding working a match, and we spent as much time on that and telling a story as what we did on any technical move. On top of that, you know, it, it was pounded into my head over and over. Winning and losing doesn't mean anything. Right. Titles don't mean anything. I went like my first two years without winning a match. Yeah. But it didn't matter because I was still over because they taught me how to push the gimmick. Mm -hmm. the, the best way that it's ever been said, and Tim Walker uses it all the time, is you don't have to go over to be over. Exactly. exactly. Guys and girls today, they don't understand that. They miss that. They think that this is legitimate. That this is a real win. No, I'm sorry. That's it, this is still, even though I hate the term entertainment, you still have to do the time honored tradition, pay your dues, get in there, earn the respect, and then build yourself from there, paying the favors forward Absolutely. until it's your time. And exactly. one of the things, see, a lot of the kids today, everybody thinks they're smart to this business, okay? <laughs> and that's not necessarily the truth. Just because you read the internet does not mean you know what's going on in this business. For us in that day to say the business is work, oh, you're done. You, no, you're you, done. You were blackballed. But the thing of it is, it's always been the same thing. It used to be a lot rougher than it is now, but that's because they protected the business. But as all these schools opened, because the schools we're talking about were pretty tight 
groups. It wasn't like a there. It, it wasn't like anybody could walk in off the street. You had to come in with someone, or you were just going to get the piss beat out of you, and then over you were gone. And over, yep. and they were going to make it so you didn't come back. Yep. If you come back, then they might have opened up their arms and said, "Okay, we're going to teach you secrets," but yep. not until you proved yourself. Absolutely. I mean, that was that was a very, and it should be a very difficult craft to come into. Adrian, you had something that you wanted to add? Yeah, it was, it was basically, again, kind of playing off on what we learned in North Avenue. And one of the things that is, is a big difference now is I was never required to personally sell tickets to get on a show. No. Now, I understand the importance of it, especially in today. There's a lot of competition out there and anybody that... And it's, I think it's every wrestler's responsibility to help promote the show and get people in the seats. I get it. But at the same token, it was never a requirement. I right. wasn't able to buy my way onto a show by saying, oh, I could sell 20 tickets, right. put me on the show. No, they're going to put me on the show because of talent, and you because of a gimmick, it. and yep. because of I, because I earned it. Absolutely. And because I was trained. You know, they, they wanted to know who trained you. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that was a very big difference between now and, and back in the days of North Avenue. So the quick fundamentals that we could talk about real quick in summation, Bob, from North Avenue, you first. North Avenue was a place where a bunch of young kids came with, that had dreams, and together, not apart, together, the group that started there, along with some guys that came not long after, became a family, you know, of sorts. Right. You know, no, I'm not at your Christmas dinner, but you know what? You're in my thoughts all the time. Exactly. And we will, as we found out a few days ago when we lost Hack Myers. It brings the brothers back together again, yes. you know. And the guys at North Avenue have that special thing. That family. That I'm not going to say isn't in other schools, but it's not like it was at North Avenue. No. Adrian Hall, final words. I really think that North Avenue is really the catalyst of what kicked off independent wrestling in Maryland. And I mean, you can go back and you can see all the stars that have been in independent that have worked in, in Maryland and started off by working out there and making the connections there and building that brotherhood and, and, and getting the training that you need and learning how to work. And those same people are now a lot of the same people that I still talk to and work with mm-hmm. and 25 years ago, you know, and look at everything that has happened from, from that humble little beginning and that crappy little, you know, gym, you know, to, to what we see now in Maryland. It's pretty fantastic. I'm gonna piggyback on exactly what you said. My thoughts on that entire matter is this. It paved the road. If you took a look at anything that has to do with today's product, everyone, those six degrees of separation, is going to be able to trace a lineage right back to that North Avenue area. Everyone that I've talked to, that's a very, very, no matter if it was in, like, with Rip in Humble Beginnings in Carroll County, went through North Avenue eventually. Yep. Everyone that's been involved in this business from that kickoff point in this in our generation has ties to North Avenue. So I agree with you 100%. Have to give that foundry block number one for our product that we've got today. Mm-hmm. But, so ladies and gentlemen, we've provided you a ton of information today on just a, one quick element mm-hmm. of our history. So for the pioneers of the independent networks, I am Ricky Blues, thanking our co-host this week, Hollywood Bob Starr, or Playboy, if you want to call him Playboy, the insatiable or erotic Adrian Hall, and, of course, myself, Ricky Blues. Again, thank you for joining us. You know, people really need to reconsider their tagline with their name, because one day when you're 46, you really don't want to hear it on the air. (laughs) (laughs) Hard rock. It it droops a lot now. (laughs) He had the Playboy die years ago.